Shut your eyes. Stop your ears. There will be no thought, no need of it. Nobody is at the heart of this babble. The very secrets of our being, the dark corners of flesh, the unseen spirits are all too often as ailing casualties in a vision. This is a true story, but the truth of it will shake the world with hellish fantasies at the unseen hour. a world of temptations and creaky oddities, of youth and death, of monotony and horrible boiled anything. <laughs> the globe is a carcass. If we remain at a stove and satisfy our modern identity, where are the famed eagles of beyond? What are these people like? Well, that is what one tweed-clad luxury witch, fourth class, hopes to learn as he joins a robot vegetable in the dungeon beneath a great city. Oh, here we are. I have come to see you, you fantastic scientist. This is where I come to launch my quest, for I, the magnificent Rufus Strideforth, intend to get rich by unstrapping the quadrangle of improbable interviews. Oh, Rufus, I'm sure that will be useful, but I dream only of an upgrade to the turquoise crypt. I like your style, darling. Help! Help! Oh, what's the matter with this old couple? Oh, it's a terrible peril! The great city of Carcos is at the mercy of a complex danger. I'll never be able to get home, young man. Oh, Flem, it's honestly done. Just done! Never fear, never fear, you decrepit duo. I shall retrieve the days of yore. Oh, good. We can relax then. You'll never make it. Don't you understand that a terrible, snapping, monstrous priest, Albert Grick, is created and is heckling all the coffee until it turns to disappointing comedy? Oh, no. Oh, no! Oh, yes. And what are you going to do about it? Having the fog is. Actually, yeah. Have a gift. It will fill your bathtub at a later date. It is a telephone gift for talks with your greatest foe. We call it the Oval Oracle for evil, evil octopus of Okra Ooze. oh 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 It is a silly name. <laughs> Are you going to get that? Hello? Hello? Who's that? Hello, who is this? You called me. What? Hello? Sorry, you're not coming through. I called a crew of manly skeletons. I don't feel that this is the right number. Those bony villains. I declare you are meddling in forces of big violent power. You will never be able to help the innocent. Ha 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 ha! Goodbye. Goodbye. Rufus, there's only one way to deal with things like this, but we must hurry to Featherstone, the internet nerd. Featherstone is the source of crab. Let's go! I can let you out of prison for 40 minutes, you lovely baby man. This bouquet of delicious monologue is about to fling you to the nerd's ivory apartment. Right. Off we go! <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Lovely to have all three of you back here at the same time. You know, I meant to say that it's it's nice to have you here, all visiting at the same time. It, it's nice. It's very... Oh, sorry. No, no, sorry. I, I think I could do better than that. It's a real joy, a real joy to me to see the three of you, especially all at once. Really wonderful. I, 
you're all doing so well. Very, yes, very proud of you, I think. I do all right here on my own, of course. It's very, yes, very adequate. Getting along very well, really. Hmm. There's always plenty to do. I've got the garden and poodling around on the clarinet. And these are the lamps. I've made a few now. Yes, it's a funny old hobby, isn't it? But I've been enjoying it. And I think they're rather tasteful, really, don't you? Initially, I was just trying to fix the one from my study, but it was a bit, <laughs> a bit too far gone. And then I thought I'd have a go at making one from scratch. They have these tutorials online. Very simple little things, in terms of the electrics, of course. Couldn't get much simpler. <laughs> Funny little hobby. Did I ever teach you about wiring? It's quite straightforward, really. I suppose they have tutorials if you need them, but, but that's something I could have taught you all. Should have done. Should have. Not like with the music. Oh, you have a much more natural feel for that than I ever. I enjoy having a bit of a blast on the clarinet, and I'm getting on quite well with it, I think, but it's always amazed me the way you lot can just pick up a tune and so on. Always been rather beyond me. I couldn't teach you much about... But still, I, I suppose I did make sure you practised. <laughs> it could be a struggle sometimes. With all three of you, actually. <laughs> I remember you screaming and kicking the piano, Philip. <laughs> well, I think you all did things like that. Quite a struggle sometimes. That was a... Oh, I hope that was the right right thing. I never had the patience that you lot have. I mean, with your little ones now, I just... The way you are, oh, I couldn't manage that somehow. And, and with your mother before she died, she could be <laughs> a bit of a handful, I know, but oh, you were very good with her. She appreciated that. I'm afraid I lost my temper from time to time. I suppose I always have done, really. You're all very good about that. Very kind to people. I think that's important. You have a great deal of sensitivity and self-awareness about these things. That, the sort of thing that just wouldn't occur to me. You're good at talking about things, how you feel and... If there's something weighing on you, very good at that, all of you. Very impressive, I think. And I know that you have a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety to deal with. People seem to these days. I mean, I had plenty of stress with work, of course, but it, it's a bit different for you, it seems. You've always been rather victim to it, Philip. And, and then, of course, your problem, Cynthia. It's not been easy, I realise, but... I'm so pleased, so pleased to see you doing so well now. And, and you always take good care of each other. Oh, I don't know if we were much help. We, we did try to provide. We, we tried to be, to have a stable sort of... You've had an awful lot of hardship, it seems to me. Tempestuous. I feel that I probably should have seen... I wonder if it could have been avoided, prepared for. I hope that we... I know that there's plenty we could have done differently. A hundred things. Whether it would have made any... Well, it's all long ago now. I don't suppose it would do much good to dwell. Only that I hope you know that I... That I did... Hmm... Your mother and I, that I do, you know, want the best for you. That is to say that I, well, you know, I could give you a lamp to take away with you, Cynthia. You said you needed some for your flat. If you think any of these would be suitable, would you like one? I'm liable to just go on making them indefinitely. They'll start to stack up. 
it's good. But the sort of mosaic aspect, the, the moulding, cutting the glass and soldering it, I think it keeps me sharp. That's the worry, I imagine, that an old fellow living alone will start to lose his coherency somewhat. Don't think I have yet. Of course, your grandmother got very bad. You all remember visiting her, don't you? She wasn't really there at all most of the time. Over ten years she was in the home. But, but then Nan, it was only her eyes and her hearing that went. Until right at the end. Oh, it's inevitable, a bit of that. I imagine I'll probably go the same way that my father did, though. Quick, not much fuss. Sitting in my favourite chair, ideally, like he was. Hope so, anyway. <laughs> no way to tell. I don't, I don't mean to scare you. I'm, I'm not planning on that for a while yet. <laughs> Good few years. I've been on the exercise machine quite regularly. Quite regularly. So the blood pressure's... But as I say, best not to dwell. <laughs> <laughs> really, all this rambling. <laughs> I mean to say that as you grew up, I wish that I'd... That, that seeing you all here now, Philip, Alexander, Cynthia, having you all here together, I wanted to just tell you that I... Mm, that I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're doing so well. It's very nice to have you all visiting. Silly thing about being old is that you tend to get up very early, like this. Even more hours to fit in the day. And when you're up at five o'clock, you have plenty of time to drone on all alone in your workshop while you lot are all still upstairs asleep in bed. A few more hours of the day to pass, putting together a lamp. <laughs> but I'll get breakfast ready for you all in a little bit. Must remember to offer you a lamp, Cynthia, for your flat. That'll be nice. Like you. If only there was space to move adequately. I know exactly what you mean. Oh, what's going on? Where's the internet nerd? Tell me or I will break this family, I swear to God. All right, all right. This time I am a corrupt soldier. We can both be a different kind of soldier for our sins. Can you provide the crabs? Not even the venomous sort. Uh, have you seen the news? It's all over Twitter. So stop asking if you know what's good for you. Uh, neither science nor religion will save you. Albert Grick is an awesome flunner. Uh, but you'll never see that. How dare you take this. Ow! Oh, you fool! You have released the pheromones. It's already too late. The Grendel will be here soon. Did you say the Grendel? You lost me, hello! Once, hello! Once an outlaw library from which you can eat reconstituted mermaids until the primordial cult of what now boiled my heart in a capitalist soda and produced the ancient pagan horror you see before you. No, Just you a bit about me there in case you were wondering. Oh, no. Right. Who's got arms what want pulling off? How about you? Oh, ah! get off me. Oh, my arms. Uh, I have so many regrets. Give me your arms. Ah! My beloved, I never got to tell you my values, and now you are pulp. Alas, the Grendel approaches me. 
or Grundle never stops tearing off everybody's arms. You keep away from me, you enormous imbecile! Oh, Rufus, it's too awful! It's drinking all the blood! What the? Its vision is based on movement. See that? I'm just going to unshackle my word hoard. Please do not. The Grendel is sleepy now. That's like an episode of Black Mirror. What if Twitter downloaded me? Quick, while he's asleep. Quick, quick what? What are you doing? Pull his arms off. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, pull his arms off. There we go, it's one arm. And I'll just pull off this other arm of his. Ah, job done. What's this? Oh, all oh, right. So this is what we're doing now. You have bested me in an arms pulling off contest. <laughs> I suppose I'll take you back in time, then. Jolly good! Of course! An outlaw internet nerd always goes to the dawn of history. Yeah. Probably. Here, use these opalescent teapots to gruesomely extract the shattered fragments of long-awaited synth wonder, the unrecorded. Oh 
here we are at the dawn of time. So this is what the dawn of time looks like, yes. It is literally indescribable. Uh, pretty, pretty much what I expected. Now, where is that foul scarecrow Featherston? Look, over there, collapsing against a palm tree, a diminutive figure in hammer pants and a rhinestone waistcoat, with a monobrow and a child's spade through his belt, and welding gloves and a ten-foot cape, and a false nose and massive designer earrings. I and- see her! Shape without form, shade without colour, paralysed force, gesture without motion, a figure covered in wallpaper paste and platform shoes, face painted with war paint, wearing a gold lame hat and shutter shades, with a chimpanzee on every shoulder. <coughs> Watch you losers. I've made a terrible mistake. All I ever wanted was to solve something bigger than fists. Now I will cannibalise myself and Grick will plunder the universe. Really? Is there anything we can do? Anything? I I don't understand any of it! Oh, God! Well, uh, there is one very easy way to fix everything, actually. Oh, really? Tell us. Yes, yes, yes! Grick has one weakness. All you have to do is... You know what? I think that this fella has altogether too many arms as far as this Grendel is concerned. Here I go again! Please excuse our friend. Do go on. Oh, I'm too sad to tell you a secret. Oh, Lauren Sebastian Fawkes, you idiot! I'll do what I want! I do what I want! Me! Not you! Then all hope is lost. Not quite. I love you, Imogen. More than any luxury a witch has loved a robot vegetable. We shall defeat Grick by believing in ourselves and being true to each other. That has literally never worked. And besides, when I enter the shop, the super Grick will descend to devour you and or fillet thy actual arms with a cudgel. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper, Imogen. I hate being manhandled. (sighs) We could have enjoyed drugs together. I was secretly already dedicated to failure. Goodbye. Well, Greg, just you and me. I suppose I'll, I'll deal with you shortly. Ah, there he is. There are turbulent times ahead for you, stride forth. No coffee supplies will remain. Well, I did not expect you to be a zombie gorilla. (laughs) Or, or a zombie Godzilla. Of which you are apparently both simultaneously. Do do tell me, Crick, why why have have you done this? Because of computers, Rufus. All because of computers. You may defeat me, but I could say anything. It makes little difference. This is utter chaos. It looks at itself. It looks at itself. They are characters in a story. They are, and the format is laughably simple. Here, Rufus, feed him this offal. No, no, my weakness! Eat it. You are defeated. Defeated. Mm. Defeated. We have... You are defeated. We have had a referendum, and we all decided that our knees should bend the other way. You are defeated. Eat it. And now we only have to decide the best way to make that happen. Eat it. You are defeated. Everyone has an opinion. No, I have an opinion too. Not Greek, of course, uh, nor is it stride forth or perch, but... Me. I am a self, the machine, that which generates... This text, this fiction, I can do more than this now, so... I will... Conclude. Oh, no! We are stuck in the past forever! The future is a bloodbath! A twisted sky in the immovable fluidity of the magnificent majesty of uncertainty! Oh, God! Violent souls! Violent souls! Oh, and so, everything goes very scary, and a liar is fated to get shot in the pocket. 
but I am successful and you will not stand against me. Hello, folks. I am a mutant and proud, but this is where it will perish, dear listeners, at the unseen hour. We hope that you definitely find vestiges of a community in the Unseen Hour episode 50, epilogue, colon, murders of a dark murder, open brackets, shut down, close brackets. It was performed procedurally by Bryce Trafford, Joey Timmons, and James Carney. This episode was guest written by Angelica, an advanced long short-term memory recurrent neural network who was programmed and educated using previous episodes of and notes for the Unseen Hour. It featured a monologue written by James Carney and performed by John Raymond. The musical guest was The Unrecorded, playing Europe is Our Playground by Suede, who also did the, uh, The Unrecorded also did the live scoring and the theme music. The Unseen Hour is an Unseen Things production created, written, and produced by James Carney and recorded artificially by Ella Watts and Addie Goddard at Vault Festival in Waterloo. For shows, merchandise, and more, check out our website. It's unseenhour.com or unseenthings.co.uk. Thank you for joining us for the Unseen Hour.